Hello and welcome. If you're wondering why there's a knife and stuff here, I'll explain. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miranda and on this channel we do lots of watercolor and art subscription boxes. Today we will be using this awesome palette of Daniel Smith colors. Now there are a few Schmincke and Holbein colors mixed in here in a few places, but for the most part, they are Daniel Smith. If you missed the video where I received these as a very generous gift, I will link that in the corner for you. So why do I have a knife and stuff out on here? Because there is extra space. And so what I have done is stuff aluminum foil along this edge just because it came in the packaging when I received all these from Diane and I just reused it. But this is a big space down here and so I stuffed foam in there and I did that by just taking some foam and lining it up in the palette, cutting it with my very sharp mini barrage, which is a really awesome knife by the way, and I cut it in half this way and stuffed it in there. I had one cut you can see here that did not work out right. I did not make it wide enough, so make sure you make it wide enough because it needs to be in there firm. Now it looks like this will work pretty well and it will keep these from like, moving around, wiggling when I'm trying to paint with them and I think that's great. And the reason I don't want to, I could put like some uhu tack or something in here. I actually found some <laughs> the other day when I was getting out all the coloring books for that coloring book video. I'll link that up there in case you missed that. Anyway, I did find some of that tack stuff that I could put on the bottoms but I want to make sure that I can take these in and out because we're doing that fun little series that I mentioned in the video about picking colors from the bag of swatches randomly for this set. And our first one I think was the lemon yellow and the cerulean blue. I don't know which one of these blues it's, I'd have to come find it over here on the swatch sheet. But regardless, I wanna be able to take them out for that series and use them individually so that I don't get mixed up when I'm doing that. That's gonna be a fun series. In fact, we might start that today. We'll see how that goes. All right, so this is a huge palette. Here's my swatch sheet. I'll put this as a reference over here. This would be super easy to use if I didn't have studio lights. <laughs> so it's, it's just large and in charge, but the legs for my studio lights kind of get in the way. I was pulling paper out of this pad because I thought maybe this is something that I would like to try to use again. Didn't like it so much the first time I used it, but look what happened. I was noticing even before I pulled this off that it was really stuck in there. Maybe because it's a travel pad, I don't know. So I was doing this the whole way across with this palette knife, which is a really thin one but it still ripped when I got to this portion here. So that might be a drawback of these Strathmore watercolor pads here. And I believe this is a 500 series watercolor pad. So now I'm going to try and just pull some of this glue off. Oh yeah, it's really stuck on there. So I may have to get an X-Acto knife or something. But that's pretty darn sharp. Oh, it's coming off pretty well, but I want to do one more sheet off of here because I think I want to do, do two paintings today. And uh, I'm a little worried about taking it off. So what I will do, see when I first pulled it up, I was going to flip it over like that, but it was bending this paper so badly that I decided to pull it off with this. Anyway, this one I was a little more careful with and could bend it off there. So you can kind of see a gap in between. So maybe you could get an X-Acto knife. Maybe if I start on the tough end. Yeah, that works. I think being able to bend it fully over that way made the difference before pulling it off. But I still have this huge glue edge on here that should, hopefully, yep, just come right off. I did prepare my little painting. We're going to be painting some horses today. And I have my Windsor Newton Cotman 12 and a Royal and Langnickel 6 round. So we are going to be doing some very abstract flowy horses. And I think it should be really fun. Okay, let's get started. Oh, crud. <laughs> Dang it, I need to do masking fluid first. Here I thought I was all ready. But there's a part on the main that is going to be super light that I want to make sure I have masked. And I also need to get rid of some of the lines on that edge. I used my kneaded eraser for that part, and then I pulled out my Daniel Smith masking fluid that I got in a subscription box and tried that out. And what I've discovered with this is that you have to keep it squeezed. So once you start squeezing it, keep it squeezed because if you let off of the squeeze, 
air will be sucked back in there and then when you go to use it on your next spot you just get a bunch of air bubbles so that is your tip for the day you're welcome <laughs> and i didn't really intend for this to be a one color challenge as well as a two color challenge but it ended up that way so for this first one I chose Joseph's Cool Gray. That's a color I've never used before until I got this set. Yay! I'm so excited for it. Anyway, it's really interesting because it separates into a bit of a green and purple and black. So I need to pull it out and look at the pigments again. I'll probably put that up on the screen for you guys. And this is a reference picture I got off of Pixabay. So if you just go over there and search horses, you'll find a bunch of different horse pictures that you can use as references, royalty free. And I thought this one would be really fun because it looked like it would be a relatively simple painting, something I could do quickly, which is what I was totally in the mood for. You guys ever get that where you just want to throw paint down on paper and not get too terribly involved in the process, but you definitely want to paint? That was me today. <laughs> And I even feel the urge right now as I'm doing this voiceover to do the painting again and again and again. And I want to try it on all kinds of different papers and see how that acts. And with different colors from this whole Daniel Smith set, because there's so many beautiful colors, this could be so much fun. So maybe I will do that. We'll see. And you probably saw in the very beginning, I wet the whole paper and put the trees down in the background, try to make them bleed out and fade out a little bit. And definitely feel like I could have done a better job. I don't know. At the time, it felt like it was about right. And I had... A little bit of trouble with the paper, eh, I don't know for sure. Until I try other papers, I can't really say whether the problem is that I had trouble with the paper or if I had trouble with me. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. So let's get the tape off and see what this actually looks like. So there it is. And I don't know, that's the problem with masking fluid and the mane. Yeah, masking fluid is a tricky one to work with and the back horse looks kind of like a donkey. Oh well. Time now for the two color challenge that I mentioned in that video. I'll play that clip for you right now. But we will do random drawings of these colors for future videos, which I think will be so fun. So we can do three colors, five colors, two colors, and just reach in, pick one, reach in, pick another one. It's going to be so much fun. That already looks like fun. Maybe we should do this for our first one. We'll do a two color challenge. All right, you guys got this, Cerulean Blue Chromium and Lemon Yellow. I'm going to put these back in there. So here are the two colors, Lemon Yellow, Cerulean Blue Chromium. And I'm just going to take a little bit because I don't know where I put that tack stuff I found, but a little bit of this kneaded eraser should work for now to keep these in here, at least enough for this quick painting. This should be interesting, here we go. Starting right into the second one, I thought the combination of these two colors would be really striking, and it actually is. I guess it's just a little bit less so than I thought, because even with layering, I can't get this cerulean blue chromium very deep in color. So maybe if I had more patience, I could keep doing it, but I also didn't want the painting to look overworked. So I didn't want to keep putting layer after layer till it like got opaque or anything like that. So I just kept it kind of loose and easy, and I don't know. It, in my head, I had this beautiful painting that was going to come out of this, and it's just okay. That's that's it, just okay. So eh, I'll just let you watch the rest of this little part and enjoy it. Oh, I was going to put you to music, but I have a funny story to tell. And I did record it, but I can't find it in my footage. But while I was painting this, I got a phone call, and I answered it. He's like, hey, Miranda, how's it going? I'm like, hey, who's this? <laughs> and the guy's like, it's me, Daniel. I'm like, Daniel who? He's like, you don't remember me? And I'm like, no, refresh my memory. I can't believe you don't remember me. Uh, fine, just do one night stands. And he hung up. <laughs> I was totally floored. I so wish I could find the footage, but I can't. I, I've tried for like half an hour to find the footage. Well, that one didn't turn out quite like I had hoped. But, oh well, I was hoping that layering the blue would definitely darken it more than it did each time, but it did not. So, tis what it is. And here I am, as usual, tinkering. <laughs> tinkering, tinkering. All right, all right, all right, enough, enough, enough. Two color challenge, there we are. This was a one color challenge. Neither of them are my favorites, so I don't know what to say about that. I guess I just need to paint more. <laughs> Here they are, side by side. I don't know. I remember having trouble on this paper, so it would be fun to try this on different paper, too, and see what happens with that. Like, does it 
behave differently? Does it turn out differently? This is the first time I've done this painting. It was a lot of fun to paint this because it was a fast painting. It's one you could just finish super quickly and have fun with. So yeah, trying this on different paper would be kind of neat because this is definitely looking a lot more like cellulose paper, even though it's cotton. So it's, it's interesting. I'm definitely not going to repurchase that paper and perhaps I will try this painting again on a different paper, maybe Arches or B or Fabriano. That was so fun, you guys. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Fuchs minky, <laughs> like, what do you call that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't want more paper to, hey, hey, hey. Ah, sorry, cat stepping on that and it's on an uneven surface. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that. Okay, now back to regularly scheduled programming. The, I have no idea what I was saying. And I have misplaced my 10, oh, here. I was like, I can't find any of that. Maybe it's here. Yep, there it is. Okay, all's good. Time for the two color challenge that we saw in that last video. I'll play those clips for you right here. How many times does it take to get it right? I mean, really, come on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, that was so fun, you guys. Oh uh, yeah, mm, gotta stretch. Anyway, okay. They're so cute, they're so cute. Look at them two little cute kitties. I mean, there's one kitty and one upside down dog. <laughs>